Okay, um, so hello everyone, welcome. I'm Claudia Gonzalez Toral from the University of Oviedo in the north of Spain, and today I'm going to talk to you about uh, this work on laser pitium, which is called Unraveling, Unraveling the Systematics of Laser Pitium Based on Morphological, Biogeographical, and Molecular Criteria. So the genus Laser Pitium belongs to the family Apiaceae, also known as Umberiferae and is formed by herbaceous species with an Arctic distribution, and is known to present several endemisms in the Mediterranean area associated to systematic, sorry, mountain <laughs> systems. So this uh, genus also belongs to the Delphinae subtribe, which is formed as well by many other genera with complicated systematics. So how do we distinguish the lesser pitium species? Well, we can use basically the number of radia of the inflorescent, uh, but we cannot use other morphological features, for example, the leaf morphology, because within the same species, we can find several subspecies with completely different leaf morphology. So this draw the systematics towards the fruit morphology. Uh, in this case, it's called schizocarp. Don't ask me to repeat that much. Um, it is a dry fruit, uh, which separates into, at the moment of this person, and has this um, characteristic two, two dorsal wings and two lateral wings. So the basic problem with the systematics of lesser pitium is that since it was first described, there were two completely different concepts of lesser pitium. We have lesser pitium sensulato, which is in a wide sense and allowed a lot of, uh, a wider range of morphological variation. And we have also the Laser Pitium Sensu Stricto, which generated tighted morphological groups and also has meant that many Laser Pitium species have been transferred to other Delphinae genesis. So in this context, the morphological tools arrive and focused on plastic and nuclear markers and have been fundamental to reveal that the schizocar features are convergent within the genesis of Delphinae. So they cannot be used to generate natural groups as they are thought to be homoplastic. So as consequences, if we use the two different concepts of lesser pitium, we found that this genus has from 13 to 35 species. So this um, situation of convergence has affected the Mediterranean endemies of the mountains because there have, they have been well studied, but mainly focused on the fruit morphology. So the Iberian Peninsula is in the western edge of the Mediterranean. And using a Lesser Pitium sensulato concept, we find seven species, two of which Lesser Pitium eliasi and Lesser Pitium longiradium are Iberian endemies. Three of them are Southwest Europe endemies, and the rest are from in general in Europe. And uh, regarding the Iberian endemies, there's one which is the Sierra Nevada endemies, which is here, just in front of Africa, which we don't have uh, molecular data of. So if we use a strict sense um, concept of Laster Pitium, we found that there are actually three lesser pitium species, one of which we don't have molecular data about, two tapsia species, one cephalaucus species, and one lost lesser species. So in this context, we aim to reevaluate the carpological diversity of the Iberian sensulato taxa to determine their phylogenetic position within lesser pitium sensulato, that is in Dothin Isaac tribe, based on nuclear and plastic markers, and finally, to determine the most adequate and coherent um, systematic. So what did we do? The carpological analysis, analysis was basically a meta-analysis focused on four main features, which were the percentile absence or, of primary ribs, hairy primary ribs, the length of dorsal winds, the length of lateral winds, and the number of vitae, which are the conduct, which we found here in the inner layer. And finally, the fruit length. So for the molecular analysis, uh, we sampled this far six different taxa, species in this case, and 
10 superspecies. And we focused our sampling efforts on the north of the Iberian Peninsula and on the south, this is Sierra Nevada. So some of these superspecies are also specific of the Iberian Peninsula. So what did we do? We took leaf tissue and we amplified the internal transcribed spacer, which is like a basic nuclear marker. Uh, and we used it to infer uh, phylogenetic trees by maximum likelihood and bias and inference in IQ3 and Mr. Bias in order to determine the position with it though thin eye. We also amplified three chloroplast markers and we concatenated them to infer an aplotype network by neighbor joining in splits tree. So what are our main findings this far? We found that the Lacerpitium sensulato um, species had mainly six different types of fruit and there are some up layers as we can see here. We don't know where to place this yet. And we found a feature that may be useful which was the number of pitae. The Lacerpitium eliasi type of fruit has 11 pitae and the rest has six pitae. On the other hand, the ITS and plastid um, data revealed the existence of three basic groups within Lacerpitium sensulato in the Iberian Peninsula. One uh, would be two species that would belong to Lacerpitium and would have this type of fruit. Then we have one taxa within Cephalaucus and we have this type of fruit and we have another three within Tapsia, two of which will have oh, yeah. this type of fruit and another, another completely different type of fruit. Of fruit. So in detail, uh, if we look at the Lacerpitium, we have a Lacerpitium sensus, sensus trictoclate. And here we were studying two species and five subspecies that we can see here. So the subspecies of these Two species had a completely different morphology, three, uh, sorry, leaf morphology. And our molecular data simply support the morphological data, which placed them within two species. So basically, morphological hypothesis confirmed. If we look at the Cephodaucus clade, this becomes interesting. So the Cephodocus clade was uh, described recently based on molecular methods. And the type was the formerly known Lacerpitium proteinicum, now known as uh, Cephodocus proteinicus. So in previous studies, studies, this had only two clades, the type clade and the Cephodocus hispadicus clade. Now we found a third clade of what was thought to be a Lacerpitium proteinicum subspecies. The problem with this Lacerpitium proteinicum subspecies Dalfurianus is that it was an endemism of the Iberian Peninsula, and it was a really vivid discussion regarding whether the morphological variability displayed was uh, enough to think that this was a different subspecies. So to the question, is this a, really a subspecies or is just variability of proteinicum? Our answer is, no, this is a species, and we call this this far Cephodocus duforianus. So finally, the Tapsia clade. Tapsia clade is really a complicated clade in general. We found that two of our Lacerpitium species fell within this clade, hence it should be transferred to Tapsia. So we supported the previous findings of Manasek. And we also found that the Endemism of Lacerpitium from Sierra Nevada, Lacerpitium longiradium, should also be included in Tapsia. And another plot twist is that these two species basically have 12, 11 beta, beta, and this other one has only six beta, and a completely different form. So if we take the morphological hypothesis regarding these three, species, we would say that there exists three, Lacerpitium eleasi, which is an endemism of the Iberian Peninsula, Lacerpitium nestleri, an endemism of Southwest Europe, and Lacerpitium longiradium, an endemism of the Iberian Peninsula. With our ITS data, 
and looking at the tap circulate, we believe that this should look more like this. We have two tap circulate plates, one which would include the type of the species, all the subspecies of Lacerpitium meliasi and Lacerpitium longevadi, and another un unexpectedly, unexpectedly uh, clade we cannot explain yet, uh, which uh, comprises two subspecies of Lacerpitium meliasi, which are known to inhabit just the north of the Iberian Peninsula. So we have two types of species, we believe, instead of three. And if we look at the morphology, we can see that in the original Tapsian Stleri clade, we have all this morphological variability. And in the new Tapsian Stleri, which we have to find the name, we have this variability. However, it's really complicated to morphologically distinguish this taxa from this other two taxa. So this is a bit, a little bit puzzling. So to summarize uh, what we have in the Iberian sensu, sensulato, we have two species of laser pigeon and we confirm the morphological hypothesis. We have one new species of Cifiodaucus and regarding Tapsia, we have to rearrange two existing subspecies and we believe we have a third new species. So that would be it. This is the rest of the team. And uh, thank you very much.